hemophilia, um, I have hemophilia A, um, severe, um, and or often called a factor eight deficiency. Um, it's a, a rare genetic disorder uh, that affects the blood uh, in the sense that uh, you're missing or have a low count of a particular protein needed for the clotting process. And as a result, uh, you have trouble uh, forming clots and this can cause intense bruising or bleeding into joints or even potentially organ issues. Um, so it can be extremely serious. Um, so, so I was born with that disorder. Like I said, it's a genetic disorder. Um, and uh, I was diagnosed when I was two uh, in 1972, uh, which was an interesting time uh, to uh, be diagnosed with a bleeding disorder. Uh, they had just developed something called uh, factor concentrate. It was a, a blood product that was made from pooled blood, where they pooled blood from, from thousands of donors and were able to distill it down to the, the small part that someone with hemophilia needed, that factor eight. Uh, and they could freeze dry it, and then you could use it later when you needed it. And it was fairly mobile. Uh, and then ultimately, uh, they taught the community how to self-infuse, give your own shots, do your own sticks. Uh, so it created a lot of independence uh, that hemophilics didn't have prior to that. Um, you still ended up in the hospital a lot. I was in the hospital many, many times. A lot of pain, a lot of joint injuries, but um, I could go to school. Um, I became an Eagle Scout. Um, you know, I got, I went to college, uh, I got a master's degree. So I was able to live a fairly normal life. Uh, so it was a big advance uh, to have happen. Unfortunately, um, they didn't realize it at the time, but uh, because of the process from pooling blood, the, uh, there was something that happened with blood contamination and some fairly serious viruses got into the products. Uh, and first one that they discovered was uh, the AIDS virus, the HIV virus. Uh, in the 1980s, hemophilics started becoming sick and they couldn't understand why uh, in the very early days of the AIDS epidemic. Um, and uh, what they discovered was that the HIV virus was actually in fact in the product and it survived the process of creating the factor concentrate. So thousands of us got exposed. And um, for those of us with severe hemophilia, it was about a 90% conversion rate. Um, so that was a lot of people, um, I think close to 10,000 people uh, that, that contracted the AIDS virus. It was a scary time. Uh, I was a teenager. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, and they were in the news at the time, there was a young man named Ryan White, who was two years younger than me. Uh, that also had severe hemophilia, and it got out in the public, and uh, people in his town wouldn't let him go to school because they were afraid of getting the AIDS virus. And that was super scary to me because that could be me. Uh, you know, I had a very strong support group and uh, family, but I had to kind of be um, careful about the information and sharing it. So I had to deal with that um, in the early days of treatment. Um, and fortunately enough, I have been able to uh, survive that and do pretty well. And now they have pretty good therapies for it. Um, unfortunately, another virus got in at the same time called hepatitis C. Uh, and that virus uh, affects the liver. Uh, and it's a kind of a slow burn. Uh, but ultimately for me, uh, it destroyed my liver. Uh, so I, I have now been able to have the therapies for hepatitis C. Uh, but uh, and it successfully had it eradicated, uh, but uh, I developed severe liver disease and ultimately had to have a liver transplant uh, just uh, three years ago. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's been a long journey with lots of obstacles. Um, so yeah, there you go. Yeah. Hemophilia or, or bleeding disorders is really, it's a lifelong condition and you, you have to learn how to, um, to accept it, which is hard. To do, especially as a young teenager, <laughs> you don't want to accept the fact that you have this severe uh, chronic condition. Um, you have to learn how to manage it, 
Um, you have to develop uh, supports around yourself, like a support network uh, of friends and family and medical people that you trust. Uh, and then you have to become your own advocate. Uh, if you can't advocate for your own care, if you don't take the leadership to lead the, the team, uh, you're not going to get the treatment that you need. Um, and uh, so that's part of uh, how I've learned to deal with it. Um, and, you know, as I face each of these challenges, uh, you know, a lot of it had to do with some of the things that my dad taught me. You know, he was a real big advocate for, you know, I could do anything I wanted to do and you've got to push. And, uh, you know, he used to say things like, uh, you got to keep putting one foot in front of the other and keep going, keep moving. Um, and even when you fall down, you just got to get back up again. And that definitely happened a lot. So 